develop. He's from Lake Erie College. Um, his advisor is Dr. Tabrina Smith, and he will be talking to us about roulette curves. So I will end with you. Hello. Roulette curves are not going to help you gamble, so you can't go to the casino after this and win a bunch of money, but we can define the roulette curve formally given three objects. We have a fixed curve, F, a rolling curve R and a generating point P. And what we do is we roll the rolling curve along F without slipping, and we follow the path that the generating point takes. And the path that it traces is called the roulette curve. So in the example shown, that's a parabola rolling along a parabola, and the generating point traces out a line. So the most famous roulette is probably the cycloid. And the cycloid is a very well studied curve. Uh, it is generated with a circle as the rolling curve, a line as the fixed curve, and a generating point on the circumference of the circle. And that traces out a nice arch. And interesting about the cycloid is it's also the solution to the verticichrone and the totochrone problems, but I'm not going to be talking about those today. Uh, there's plenty of information online about those. Uh, the cycloid is also a great curve to study for the derivation of a formula because the cycloid's derivation is pretty simple because it, the, the circle is such a symmetrical object. And we split the motion of rolling into rotation and translation. So we start with the circle centered at zero comma r. So r would be the radius of the circle. And we first consider the rotation of the circle. So if we let it roll through an angle theta, then it will have rotated by an angle theta. And the position of the generating point at this this time can be found by looking at the right triangle formed between the y-axis, the generating point, and the uh, radius of the circle attached to the generating point. So the bottom part, r sine theta, that's where we get the x component from. It goes back r sine theta units. But then for the y component, you have to look at this distance which can be found by taking the complete radius, r, and subtracting off this part of the right triangle, r cosine theta. So that's the position of the generating point after rotation, but now we have to deal with the translation. So we translate it by using the fact that it rolls without slipping. That means that the arc length covered on both the fixed curve and the rolling curve are the same. So the pink <coughs> section and the teal section are the same length, r theta. And because the translation is only in the x direction, it's on a straight line, we can add r theta to the x component. Now, theta was just an arbitrary <coughs> angle. We can change that then to t as the parameter, and we get the final equation for the cycloid shown in green above. But now we look for the general roulette. What if we don't have a circle, but we have something else? And what if we don't have a line, but we have something else? Well. The only condition, at least that I know of, is that the length of the two curves has to be the same at any time t. So they have to be parameterized in a way that this length and this length are the same. So what we do is once we have a parameterization, we let the rolling curve roll through a specific time t naught, and we split the position vector of the generating point at that time t naught into two components. We have from the origin to the generating, or to the point of contact, and then from the point of contact to the generating point. And we can consider each of them separately, and then in the end, we can just add those two vectors together. So for the first vector, we use the fact that we let the rolling curve roll through a time t naught. So that means it's rolled along t naught from the fixed uh, along the fixed curve, and that means that the point of contact is just f of t naught. So the vector, the position vector, is just f of t naught. So that was a, a very quick derivation of the first one, but now we have to deal with the second one. And the second one is a lot trickier because it's the, we're looking from the point of contact to the generating point. Well, what we can do is we can roll back the rolling curve to its original position. And we can use the fact that since they have been rolling without slipping, these two lengths are the same, right? And that means that this, in particular, is at r of t naught. 
The point R of T naught will come into contact with F of T naught after rolling through a time of T naught. So we can split this position vector into two components, R of T naught and the initial position of the generating point P. And then we have the terminal minus the initial to get P minus R of T naught. And that is the position vector rolled back. It's the, it's the right length, it's just the wrong direction. In the, when you roll it, it's going to change direction to be vertical in this case, right? So we have to account for that rotation. And uh, the rotation can be found by changing it into two parts. First, you have to rotate the entire curve so that the tangent is parallel to the x-axis. And then you have to complete the rotation by bringing it parallel to the tangent to f of t naught. And the first part is basically just undoing the angle theta between the tangent line to r of t naught and the x-axis. So that should immediately bring to mind derivatives. And indeed, we will be looking at derivatives. But because this is a, a, a parametric or vector value function, r of t, we have to look at the different components separately. So we look at the derivative of the x component and the derivative of the y component, and these aren't necessarily the actual lengths, this is just for visualization purposes. Uh, so we have a right triangle here, derivative of, of the y component with respect to p and the derivative of the x component with respect to p. So theta then can be found by just taking the inverse tangent of the y component derivative over the x component derivative. Almost, but not quite, because there will be some situations where the angle theta that we're looking for is something like this, and that's outside of the domain of the inverse tangent, right? Or outside of the range. So uh, an example would be like the circle. You could have this is r of t naught, and we have a right triangle there, and it would give us the wrong angle. So what we do is we use a different function. It's very similar, but it's the atan2 function. And basically, it just takes into account which quadrant the angle is in. And the usual notation is to have the y component followed by the x component. And that is theta. And for the other angle, phi, it's a very similar idea, except now we are looking at the angle between the x-axis and the tangent to the fixed curve f. And we get a very similar expression, the only difference being that the derivative is of the fixed curve rather than the rolling curve. So taken together, we are rolling through an angle alpha phi minus theta. Now the reason we are doing phi minus theta is because we are trying to undo theta and we're trying to roll through phi. So if you imagine we are trying to create a net clockwise rotation of r but theta is pointing counterclockwise. So we have to take the inverse of it. And then similarly for phi, we are trying to roll clockwise, but it's already pointing clockwise, so it is positive. So we can just multiply this position vector P minus R of T naught that we found earlier by a rotation matrix to get the final position vector for uh, the second component. And we can just find the add everything together, and we get an expression for the position of the generating point at time t naught. Time t naught, though, is arbitrary, and we can replace it with t, a parameter, to get the final expression for a roulette curve. That is, it is wonderful, because now we can create examples, animations. So I have a bunch of examples, and First is a catenary rolling on a catenary, and we are looking at the generating point following the vertex of the catenary. And it creates a nice, like, Pringles mustache looking curve. Um, now, these animations sometimes load very slowly, so, and this is the last part, so if, if, if oh, this one's working, okay. So the line rolling on the catenary, and we're following a specific point to create a line. And I attached a little black connecting piece from the line to the generating point just to make it clear that it is staying fixed relative to the rolling curve. If that generating point weren't at negative one, it wouldn't trace out a line. So this is a very special position 
if it went, were up here or down here, it would create like little loops or it would go like all make a little hump. But it's a very special point. A roll, a circle rolling on a circle. This is an epicycloid, and that's what my email is: epicycloids at gmail.com. <laughs> And now we can take that epicycloid and roll it on a line and call it a center. Let's create an oval. And then the final example, this one is usually the one that takes the longest to load, so if there's any questions while it's loading, I can take those. And then, okay. So what is it supposed to be the single one? <laughs> oh, not yet. Not yet. So this is a logarithmic spiral rolling on a line, and we're following the center of the logarithmic spiral. And this one traces out a nice diagonal. Now I've also been working on uh, just like yesterday. I was messing around, uh, you know, in surfaces rolling on surfaces. So like going up a dimension, and I, I was getting it to work. It, it, it uses like directional derivatives instead of just the regular, but uh, it's, I didn't have time to put anything in the presentation about it, so. I, I can take questions, if there's any. Uh, for the epicycloid rolling across the line, how yeah. did you handle the derivative uh, where the, like the points were, would the derivatives there be undefined? Yeah, it would be undefined there. But um, it doesn't show in the animation because it just. Okay. Yeah. What software did you use? For I used GeoGebra. It is a. <laughs> it is a free geometry visualization software and. Um, if you actually want the workbook, there's a specific workbook I use to create the animation. Uh, you can give me your email after, and I can send you the uh, link to the workbook. So you can, the workbook's set up so you can just put in any curves, and it'll create the animation. Because wasn't there, it was easy to create, but didn't you have an issue importing? Yeah, yeah, it doesn't have a great like, compilation and rendering feature. So it's, it's great at working on inside the software. But then to actually export it into an animation is, you know, it, it's, it's not very fun. Yes? With that, the one you described about the Pringles mustache, yeah. um, is there any, like, uh, non-parametric version of that curve, or is it? Um, I am not sure. Um, probably because the, it, it, it's not a very, like, uh, difficult function to put out just because the catenary is a very nice function has very nice derivatives and whatnot. So there probably is a uh, non-parametric form, but I don't know. Yeah. What, what other curves have you thought about or would you think about rolling? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know, actually. Uh, maybe, I mean, you saw the parabola on the parabola yeah, one. Did you try any other polynomials, for instance, you know, cubic on a cubic, or yeah, I tried, but it or? didn't really create anything interesting to me. But one interesting one is if you have a cycloid or a certain kind of cycloid, you can roll a square on it. Mm -hmm. um, so the square wheels on a bicycle on a on a cycloid actually works. Yeah, yeah. So you can even do your, some irregular your operations. Yes, I'm not going to follow